Today I'm going to be going over a really soft, natural bride, spring, prom, mother of the bride, bridesmaid, basically any special event when you want this really pretty soft, natural, but still features that pop, um, particularly if you're gonna be involved in any sort of photography. Now, obviously right now I'm not wearing that look. I have a completely different look on right now. It's gonna be for a different video that I'll be posting um, in a couple of weeks. Today's video I started um, specifically because in chatting online, while I had to take a little break from doing videos and posts uh, because I was moving, I was chatting and hearing from a lot of different people a lot of the same question. Um, actually, I have my list here because there was a bunch of them. So contouring was a huge one. Um, what products for people who are on a tight budget? Colors for green eyes, colors for brown eyes, hazel eyes, gray eyes, all different eye colors other than just blue. This one comes up quite a bit. Can you do a tutorial with really natural with a really natural look, really natural colors, really natural, 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 natural. So um, I'm gonna touch on that because what most people think is natural in a photo when they hand you a photo at 16 years of doing makeup artistry is a lot more makeup than they're ready for. So what you're So what you're really asking for is natural colors, not really natural makeup. It's, so what I did was I did a lot of research, found a palette that kind of addresses all of these needs and all of these questions. Um, and the reason I wanted to find a palette in, in a single item is I really wanted to address that person going to a special event that it has to go out and buy makeup for a special event and needs that one palette that they can wear kind of all the time that addresses all of these needs but doesn't break the bank. So the palette that I found um, that got the highest marks in all of these is the Smashbox Shape Matters palette. So you've got lots of natural colors. You've got a complete highlight and contour kit here. You've got a brow wax and two brow shades and then all these beautiful eyeshadows. There's also a brush that goes here, but obviously I can't hold it up that way. It's a really nice brush as well. So yes, most contour and highlight palettes are like 50 bucks minimum on average. So 30 to 50 bucks, depending on the palette and who makes it in the brand. Um, even in the, even in drugstore brands, you're looking at 20 plus for a good highlight and contour. Um, the shimmers are great because they're really versatile for all ages, because we know as we age, we don't want to put on heavy metallics and shimmers. So even a mother of the bride could use this, someone in their forties and fifties and up, um, for the most part could use this. And the shadow textures and the contour powders were really easy to use um, and very effective for just an everyday and for this look. So that's why I chose the specific palette. So one of the other tools you're gonna to see me use quite a bit is a beauty blender. If you're, this is something that you definitely wanna become familiar with as far as a tool for when you're highlighting and contouring and doing special event makeup. For everyday makeup, maybe not so much because it can be a little bit more tedious if that's not your thing, but for special event makeup, absolutely. I'm gonna have a lot of products that are in a lower price point that don't break the bank. And then midway through the video, when we get to foundations and concealers and powders and everything else, we're gonna start getting into some of my just personal favorite products for when I'm doing makeup for photography. Uh, if you'll watch the screen at the bottom, you'll notice I have little dollar signs that are going to notify you of the price point that you're looking at. If you just click the little arrow right under here, under the video, um, it'll expand here. This will tell you every product that I have on. It will go over all of the brushes as well, so you don't have to worry about rewinding or fast forwarding if you don't want to, but I will list all of the brushes and all of the colors and products along the bottom of the screen. Hope that you enjoy this spring bride tutorial, um, and I hope that you can subscribe and come back and check out the look that I'm wearing now. Thanks. When it comes to photography, the brows are probably the single most important structural part of your face that you need to make sure is groomed and enhanced. Um, we're gonna start with brow mapping. And so this is a technique that is going to give you the perfect architectural balance of the brow um, to match your eye and your face shape. So we're gonna start by lining up a pencil, or you can use a brush, marking it, going straight up from the nose first, then from the side of the nose, over the pupil, that's gonna be where your arch should fall. And then it's gonna come from the side of the nose directly straight out to the side of the eye. That's where your brow should end. 
Now, because I have over tweezed years ago, I have extremely thin brows, as you can see. So I have to do a couple of extra steps to really define my brow and create a perfect brow shape. I'm gonna start with this brow gel in a taupe that I can sculpt out the top and bottom line of the brow that really doesn't exist there and create a great brow shape that I can then go back in and fill in with a powder. If you already have full brows and you just need to fill in a couple of areas where you might have a bald patch, maybe you have a scar, maybe your brows just don't extend as far as your brow mapping has marked, then you would just go straight to the powder that I'm gonna be using next here and use that to define the brow. Any bald patches, the wax that comes with this kit is really meant for grooming, but it's actually great to tap a little bit of that on a bald area and you can actually use that to help adhere the powder to the skin. The closer you get to the nose, to this inside corner of the brow, you want to make sure and just let that powder start to disappear there. You don't want to square that off in a harsh way where it looks artificial or almost angry. This is a clear brow gel that I'm just using almost like a hairspray just to groom the brows up and over. Now I'm going to be using a concealer and a concealer brush and what this is going to do is give me a really crisp, clean line under the brow to really groom out where I've created and sculpted that brow line. This is typically called cutting into the brow. So what we're doing is just cutting in and defining that line. And then I'm using my Beauty Blender just to press out the excess product so that it doesn't budge or move any of the existing brow color that I have there. Now, is this a technique that I utilize every day? Absolutely not. No, I'm not gonna take this kind of time every single day on my brows, but anytime that you are doing special occasion makeup, you wanna really define and really make a nice crisp brow so that it pops in pictures and so your face shape is really defined and balanced by your brow. Priming the eye for shadows in my opinion, is the single most important step to making your shadows look amazing and look really blended. So I've used the MAC Paint Pot and then I'm going directly over it with the vanilla from this palette and I'm gonna take this just throughout the entire brow bone. Now I'm going in with the Champagne, which is a really pretty soft shimmer on the lid and I'm gonna take it on the lid and inside this tear duct area. For my transition color, I'm gonna to use Totally Nude, and I'm actually going to layer this color. So I put a couple of layers of this right into the crease, all the way up onto that brow bone, um, stopping short of the brow itself. Then I went in with a darker brown using the same brush, and I'm taking this just into the crease and outside corner and blending this like my life depends on it. Now using a small pointed pencil brush, I'm gonna be using a rose color from this palette that has a little shimmer to it, and I'm gonna take it right underneath the lashes and inside this tear duct. Then I'm gonna go in with a smoky brown pencil, and I'm gonna go in the waterline on top and bottom, and then on top I'm gonna to extend that line just a little bit up onto the lid, and make sure it's a little wider on this outside corner, but not quite making that a wing. Using a tight lining brush and the smoky brown color from the palette in Sumatra, I'm gonna take that and smudge out this line and just give it a really pretty soft smoky effect on the bottom. On the top, I'm gonna to do the exact same thing, but with a plum shade called Aubergine, and I'm really gonna define this on top. For special occasions, weddings, um, prom, anything where you're gonna need your mascara to wear for a really long time, or if you're gonna potentially have any tearing or crying, I do like to make sure and apply a waterproof mascara for this. So I'm doing a waterproof here, just one coat on top, two to three coats on bottom, and the only reason I'm doing that on top is because I'm gonna be applying a set of false lashes to the top lashes.
I chose this specific type of lash um, because it's easily accessible at just about any, I think Walgreens is where I picked it up. I excuse that cut on my finger from gardening. Um, but they're very lightweight, they're easy to find, and if you're not used to wearing lashes, they're not gonna feel heavy on you, and they're also very reasonable. What I'm doing here is taking my lash tool and pressing my real lashes into those false lashes so they're not obvious. I hate seeing a shiny glue line after the glue dries, so I like to take the matte powder shadow that I use to smudge out the pencil and soften that shiny glue line with that matte shadow. All right, moving on to skin. Okay, now we're going into some of my favorite products under makeup. This is my favorite eye cream under makeup. Um, and this is how I feel about the fact that I'm down to just a sample of this product right now because it is definitely a luxury item. I am pressing this underneath the eyes to prepare for concealer in a moment. Now I'm going to be putting on my Tom Ford Illuminating Primer that's going to help to smooth out pores and lines. And then following that up with the Armani Corrector, which is a almost a bright orange color that I'm going to be using on the very inside corner of my eye to cut all that lovely, lovely blue that you see there from not sleeping because I have a one-year-old. So that's going to help to cut that ashy gray tone that peeks through your concealer. Um, once you've applied it, this brightens that first. And as you can see, big difference. It's gonna make a huge difference in how much concealer I need to apply shortly. Now I'm gonna be using the Silk Cream Oil-Free Photo Edition Foundation from Laura Mercier in Medium Ivory. Um, this is a hint lighter than what my skin tone is at this point, and that's fine because I'm gonna be going back in with highlighting and contouring. This is gonna give me an overall smooth finish, and I prefer this foundation pressed in only with a beauty blender. I like to use a foundation brush sometimes, but not with that particular foundation. Highlighting and contouring. I'm gonna start with a cream under eye concealer because I'm gonna be using powders to highlight and contour. Um, if your under eye area is drier, the last thing you wanna do is put a lot of powders, and I am. So I'm gonna use a creamy concealer here first to brighten and press that out. And then I'm gonna go into the contouring shade, which as you can see is much more of a taupe brown with an angle brush. Here I'm tapping off because I wanna make sure that that excess product is removed on my skin before I touch my face so that I don't have a splotchy area where that first swoop of contour goes. I'm gonna be taking this up under my cheekbone, working up towards my ear and onto my temple. I'm then gonna work that onto my forehead around the hairline. Now I'm switching brushes to something that is a little bit more defined, slightly pointed tip, and I'm gonna work that onto the side of the nose very lightly. And then I'm gonna take that underneath my chin and hit my jawline. Beginning with the matte highlight color, I'm gonna start with a soft brush hitting the top of the cheekbone Right in the center of the forehead, I'm gonna come right down the center of my nose as well. Right on the chin, a little bit on the top lip. This area here, very lightly, if you get heavy handed here, it can start looking really artificial and stripey. I'm gonna switch brushes now and move on to the bronzer color that comes to warm up the skin because right now the color I've used to sculpt is more taupey and I'm gonna look a little gray. This is gonna give me that nice warm sun-kissed glow that I'm gonna lightly just dust right over any area that I've contoured just to warm the skin up. I'm gonna use it a little bit more broadly in these areas without taking away from my highlight. Switching to my fan brush here, I'm gonna go into the shimmery highlighter, and I'm gonna use this to bounce light right off the top of my cheekbone. This is a beautiful candlelit looking highlighter. I love this highlighter actually. Um, it was very subtle, but it does make that light bounce just enough so that you get that little pop on the top of the cheekbone without being over the top glittery. Um, now we're gonna move on to cheeks. Uh, this is where we get that beautiful blushing bride glow. Uh, I'm using a more rose-toned plum here on the apple of the cheek pretty much only and then sweeping it back into that bronzer that I've already applied so it just disappears. If you don't want something so rosy and you'd like something just a hint more peachy or warm with this look, you can absolutely do that and use something like Melba from MAC. 
Okay, lips, here we go. To help the liner go on and also keep the lip color from bleeding, since I'm gonna be using a gloss, I'm using a lip primer on the outside of the lip as well as on the lip itself. Using a very, very neutral pencil, I'm gonna define the entire lip, the outline of the lip, as well as filling in with the pencil everything but the very center of my mouth. And I'm gonna just lightly fill that in all over before I go in with a matte cream lipstick in a very neutral color and then top it off with just a really pretty high shine clear gloss. And we're done. I hope I answered some of those questions out there. I had a great time putting this video together and I really appreciate you watching. I hope that you can tune back in again soon. Thanks so much.